So welcome once again to the uh, dreadfully hungover world of home automation. Uh, I've I had a bit of a skin fall last night and uh, I'm back on it now. That's always a good idea. Um, yeah, Hair of the Dog is about to finally meet my lips and I'm going to feel much better. Um, and welcome also to a, a terribly choppy tutorial. Um, I didn't really plan it out, I just kind of started doing bits and then thought, right, that should go in that order. Uh, and yeah, it's come out pretty choppy, so uh, apologies, it seems to bounce around a little bit, but um, it is in the right order, it's in a sensible order, it's just that I stop talking and start talking in strange bursts. So apologies in advance, uh, enjoy. So before we start, I thought it would be a good idea to uh, give you a, a very brief lesson in networking, if you uh, don't already know what you're doing. Um, so networking again is one of those things that I think people are afraid of even though it's fairly straightforward in reality uh, this thing here is your router uh, you will have one if you have an internet connection you won't be watching me unless you have an internet connection so I presume you have one of these uh, it will be given to you by your ISP normally uh, or you might have bought one yourself from Maplins or similar sort of store uh, and basically its job is to get an internet connection which isn't in this diagram uh, and give it to these things uh, your PCs and your laptops and your mobile phones. Its other job is to direct traffic around. So um, it gives an IP address to every computer so that they can talk to each other. So in order for uh, my mobile phone to talk to my computer, my mobile phone needs to know that the IP address of the computer is that. Now you can find your IP address uh, simply by typing into a command prompt window. Start in search bar type cmd ip config press enter on your keyboard uh, and you'll get a default gateway that is your router 192.168.0.1 and you'll get your ipv4 address 192.168.0.12 uh, which is my pc 192.168.0.12 if i go and do the same thing on farley's laptop i'll get 0.10 and if I did the same thing on Nisha's laptop, I'd get 0 0.13. Uh, and if I knew how to do it on my phone, which in all honesty I don't know how to do it, I would get 0 0.11. Uh, rubbish, I do know how to do it. It's uh, in the About section of the phone. Um, so I have to set my phone up for Event Ghost uh, to tell it that the server that has Event Ghost on it is at IP address 192.168.0.12. So the first thing you're going to need to do um, in Event Ghost is set Event Ghost up so that it knows which PC to go to. Uh, so this is Event Ghost, if we go to Menu and then Options and then Add New, I can tell it uh, all about my PC so it knows where to send its information to. So the new server I'll call uh, Alex. Hostname or IP address, um, so we know from command prompt it is 192.168.0.12. The port is 1024, so that's the port that Event Ghost is listening on. Password is optional, I haven't got one on mine at the moment, uh, just for the purposes of testing. Uh, so save, um, and then I can connect to Alex. So I've got two Alexes now, as you can see, so I need to get rid of one of them, so just delete that one. So Alex already exists as my default. I can also connect to my tablet. I've got an instance of Event Ghost on my tablet, uh, and my tablet's IP address is 0 0.46. Um, so I created a, a different port forwarding rule on the router, uh, 1025 this time, um, so it knows that if a request comes in on 1025, it isn't for my PC, it's for my tablet, and to go there instead. Uh, and the tablet's IP address is 0 0.46. Um, so that's the setting up of Event Ghost on your mobile phone. Then uh, I need to tell my router that if a request comes from anywhere on the network for port 1024 to send it to this PC because that's where my Event Ghost uh, instance is. So when I want to send a key press on my phone, I want it to end up here. In order for it to end up here, I need to tell my phone and my router, send on port 1024 
if you get a if you receive a request on port 1024 send it to this PC this PC will know what to do with it because it has event ghost installed on it and event ghost uh, runs on port 1024 exactly the same thing for voxwave so you would need to uh, create a port forward entry in your router if you intended to use your mobile phone as a microphone uh, instead of forking out money for one so what you would do is uh, voxwave automatically sends on port 3300 uh, vox commando has been told receive on 3300 and you can change these if you want to, I wouldn't recommend it uh, and so I need to tell my router if you get any requests come through on port 3300 send them to this PC because that's where event ghost is okay so the router page uh, you can program very easily really you basically visit the IP address of the router uh, so if you remember we went start and typed in cmd IP config and we can see that the default gateway is 192.168.0.1 .1. so all I do is I put that into my browser without the www dot and then press enter and it takes me to the Virgin Superb page so this isn't a page on the internet I could get to this page even if my internet connection was down as long as I'm connected to the router I can get to this page it lives inside the router and the whole point of this page is for setting up networking and controlling your internet connectivity as well so you won't necessarily have a virgin super hub but the theory is the same you would uh, be able to find your default gateway in command prompt put it into your browser and visit the page uh, now I don't know what your username and password will be your ISP will probably tell you what they are for a virgin super hub the default username and password is admin and change me and then it tells you to change it and if you're lazy like me you never do uh, you can probably google for what is the default password for a whatever router and you will find your answer so in the virgin superhub you go to advanced settings you go to uh, port forwarding which I've gone past somewhere and this in our diagram is on here so this page lives on my virgin superhub and I'm making changes to that virgin superhub to tell it uh, where to go um, when requests come in for port 1024 uh, so I have already set it up um, but I'm going to uh, show you again so I'll call it event ghost the start port is 1024 the end port is 1024 the IP address I want it to send to is 192.168.0.12 I know this because that is the IP address of this computer where event ghost exists so I'd click add rule and that would add it to this little table below and I could press apply it already exists there event ghost port 1024 send to 192.168.0.12 you can see I'm the only one that does any networking in this house and that's why there isn't really any other IP addresses these are all my machine uh, for various different things uh, Voxwave there again 33000 so in our diagram I've got um, the ability to forward on the port for Voxwave uh, to that computer to get to Vox, Wave, uh, Vox Commando and the same thing for Event Ghost so it knows not to send them to Farley's PC or Nisha's PC so that is the point point that is the point of port forwarding um, so port forwarding not as scary as it sounds at all very easy to do um, so that means that when I press a button on my phone in event ghost the event is uh, sent through our diagram it's sent uh, from my phone uh, through event ghost to the super hub uh, to my PC and then to the event ghost client. The idea is you can create um, layouts, so kind of like your own sort of remote control screens, really. Uh, so that's the uh, layout I've created for the PC. Uh, and these icons can be um, sent to your main screen of your phone uh, and be used as widgets. 
Um, so in order to create these you need to go to edit layout by clicking menu and edit layout you see the screen turns a kind of shade of brown uh, and from here you can then add icons so you click on the add button up here uh, and you can choose from one of their icons uh, so there's a fair few to choose from there or you can click on other and you can uh, you can put your own in so you can basically just add whatever kind of icon you want to uh, you then need to name your event, so we'll call this one uh, test, or teat, <laughs> which is far more amusing, I believe it is teat, uh, event, oh, I'm going to put in teat again. Um, if you click enduring event, what it does is uh, it allows you to hold down pressing the button, so if you made like a volume icon and you wanted it to repeat when you held the icon down, uh, then you'd want an enduring event. Um, I'm just going to have this as a single press and then save dismiss the uh, reminder there and when I press test or teat rather over here uh, it will do nothing at all because I haven't actually saved my layout so I have to actually save the layout now um, and by just pressing back it will save so I can press teat and it will uh, send an event to event ghost on the PC um, and you will be able to then drag that event into whatever action you want to control. Um, so in order to put this icon on your main screen of your phone, if you wanted a widget like I've got, uh, you just need to go to back to menu and then edit layout. And then you can hold down on the icon. Sorry, you can press the icon. Uh, and then click on create home shortcut. It will then put the teat icon on my main screen. At least it would have had any space. I don't have any space left, so it's not appeared. I could just create more windows and then save it that way instead. So you can see when I press my teat, uh, I get a TCP teat appear here. And I can drag that TCP teat into um, any action I want. So let's stick it in party mode. And therefore, the next time I press uh, teat, you'll see that uh, XBMC is launched and party mode starts. Uh, Brian Adams, very sexy, comes on. Uh, Alexander, stop. Uh, so that's Event Ghost. Same thing with Voxwave. Um, I hope that's been useful for you. Uh, I'm presuming that if you've never done any networking before, it will have been. Uh, so, as usual, subscribe to me and uh, like me and do all of those things that make me feel better about myself. Uh, thank you very much. I'll see you next time.